welcome to Grey Muzzle Geekery for the week of September 23rd, 2019, episode 32. I'm Dusty Red, and with me as always, I'm Dusty White. And let's get into this week's news. Deering Thigh Slit gets cosplaying Chun Li suspended off of Twitch streaming service. Twitch using vague censorship rules as reason for the temporary high kick. Do you think you've got serious multitasker skills? Well, Hearthstone Grandmaster player Seiko thought he did too before he made a major mistake in his league match due to playing a qualifier match for a 1 million auto chess tournament. Esports have made it to the big time, ladies and gentlemen. They even have their own multi-sport controversy. Congratulations. NBC announces their own streaming services, who didn't see this coming, cleverly called Peacock. Reboots are on the horizon. (laughs) Battlestar Galactica, Ian's the Cylon, (laughs) revivals of Saved by the Bell and Punky Brewster are all slated to be revived. I'm looking forward to the new expansion of Ian's the Cylon. I'm really looking forward to that. It's supposed to have great drama and just, ah. uh, High-pitched squealing? Oh, a bunch of high-pitched squealing. (laughs) I'm not the Cylon. Oh, that sounds like something a Cylon would say. So disgraced right-wing nut job Milo Yi Anopoulos finds himself banned from the Midwest Fur Fest after public outcry demanded the supporter of pedophilia and white supremacists. As a result, Milo took to the chat app Telegram, the only social media platform he's really not been kicked from, to state that he will still be in attendance with members of the Proud Boys, a neo-fascist, politically violent group. As the days uh, become closer from now to the December 6th convention, we'll keep an eye on other emerging news. And most epic game of Yahtzee ever played accidentally occurred on a highway to Atlanta. A truck bound for Trivium Studios turned too sharply and resulted in a record 216,000 six-sided dice spilling all over the roadway. Now remember, sixes explode so you get bonus damage. (laughs) And unfortunately, we have to announce some new names to the Grey Muzzle Graveyard. Edward Joseph Mahoney, better known as Eddie Money, the famous rock singer of the 70s and 80s, has passed away from complications uh, from esophageal cancer at the age of 70 on September 13th, 2019. Also... Richard Theodore Okasek, Rick Okasek is better known as, from the Hall of Fame lead singer for The Cars, has passed away at the age of 75 of natural causes on September 15th, 2019. And finally, Aaron Eisenberg, best known for his role as Nog on Star Trek Deep Space Nine, has passed away from currently unknown causes, though he was known for having a number of health issues at the age of 50 on September 21st, 2019. And that takes us to the end of news, and we go into this week's topic. I can't just go and going to give everybody a uh, little warning, so to speak, of Holy Crap, LARP Talks Galore, Dragonfall 2019. (laughs) So obviously we didn't write a, uh, a review as we were asked to by the wonderful staff at Alliance South Michigan, because we knew we were going to do an audio recording of or rather a full podcast on the events of Dragonfall, their big marquee event. Their yearly marquee event. Their, their, their thank you yeah. to both players and staff and basically to the game as a whole to be like, hey, we do things and we're, we're happy you guys come play our game. And in a way, we also say thank you by donating a variety of things and, and bringing community together and getting other players from other states to come to South Michigan to kind of blow this up into a thing. And it actually kind of hit some record numbers and, um, what, 60 PCs? and I believe so, yeah. And uh, contests and other games and such. So let's start with you, my dear Dusty White. What was your take on Dragonfall 2019? Being that it was a event that has been sold to us for a couple of years. With the inability to attend ourselves, unfortunately. Correct. Uh, One year, I think it was because we were running our own game in Nero International. At uh, Kalamazoo at the time? No, Grand Rapids. Uh, Yes. We're at Grand Rapids. We we ran the Tailwagger games in Grand Rapids the first year that we we were... uh, discussed 
going to Dragon Ball, and unfortunately, it was the same weekend. And then that same problem happened the next year, where it ended up falling on a Grand Rapid weekend. Um, so we again were not able to attend. We were, we were vested in the other game. At Correct. The time. Correct. So this was the first year that we were able to attend, and by far, absolutely one of the best moments that I think I've ever experienced as a as a LARPer in in entirety. The it, event itself or a the, specific event? The, the event itself as a whole. There were some things that were miscommunicated that happens in any any type of event with plot. It doesn't matter if it's a dragon fall or a, a celebratory event at all. There's just always miscommunication sometimes between plot and when things are supposed to go off and timing, things like that. But overall, as an event, it was by far something that I will remember for a very, very long time as my first experience. So my also first experience of Dragonfall, and I do agree with you on that. I know our Friday night was a little on the slow side. There was a major um, non-player character, but uh, one of the major nobility that was played by our um, Grey Muzzle artist, uh, Travis, playing the Dark Elf uh, Count, uh, known as Count. One of the nobles. One of the nobility. (laughs) And he was definitely setting up a lot of what was to happen. And we didn't know at the time, obviously. We didn't know... As he was in town talking to other players and getting information and exchanging, like, riddles for boons and such things that there was a grand scheme behind it all, which is obviously a good move on plot teams and storytellers to kind of lay the groundwork to where, like, what's going on? Okay, I'll play along. And then when you look in hindsight and go, oh, well, shit. Right. (laughs) So... Um, it was good that he was out there and he was doing his role play stuff and then, you know, interacting with a lot of the players, even players from out of state who don't normally attend Alliance South Michigan, who may be new to the game itself uh-huh. and establishing a baseline of, hey, I'm one of the major nobles. Hey, I'm here to listen and talk. And he's a kind of plays the old dark elf type thing, the, the, the sage, so to speak, the the wise warrior who wants Grandpa. to... Grandpa Co. Grandpa Co. Get off my lawn, you damn raid guilds. So, so yeah. but I'm going to I'm going to re- reel you back just a moment because it was even before Leon had happened on Friday night. What did you feel of the donation table that occurred? So, the game had put out or South Michigan, the people of South Michigan said, "Hey, we want to do a uh, a reward, I guess, of sorts because it's been established in the fa- in the past that they hand out chits or points. Tokens. Tokens, whatever. It's, it's, uh, it, whose lines in any way right. all over again. It, points don't matter. Everything's made up. But you're handed out these things to then buy items for yourself or who are or, or gifts or whatever. And a lot of these items, some of these items were magic items for sure. It had tags on there that allow you to do magical powers. And some of the things were, Pouches, cloaks, jackets, you know, latex weapons, a physical variety of items. Things. Physical actual physical items that were donated by drink players and such. <laughs> um, so what was my take on it of the similar take that I took from the plot people and the staffers of it was one of the largest tables of donations I've seen in a very high very long quality. Time. Also, right, and it wasn't just like these, you know, throw tabard away. Or There's some things in there that were, you know, obviously gently used. Uh, some pouches that we personally donated that we've gotten from another player. They were still in good condition. They were still very much usable, and they were all donated to the game to be one to be turned into either magic items or just to be given or bought by new or old players that could look and go, hey, this mask or this pouch, pouch. or this... Um, quiver. F- quiver or f- uh, sword frog or... Corset, armor, uh, bracers. Brace- a lot of bracers and a lot of leather pieces were put on the table, not only just donated from players, but also from the chapter itself. Put these on the table for tokens to be won in the game. It was like... Look, I'm I'm dead inside. So when I say like <laughs> I had a little tear in my eye, you know I'm lying. I didn't have a tear in my eye. I you know I don't cry. You know that. But to see such generosity 
on behalf of players and staff Multiple and everything players. else. Was- I, I personally loved it because it gave an opportunity be, uh, for personally me and other players that have played the game for so long that have pieces that may not have that, that may have been given as gifts or may have been given as um, things that you wouldn't wear as your character or, or you had obtained from other players, you know, stop playing the game. Well, just a lot of times you get stuff that's also just been outgrown. But it doesn't of... end up in a NPC box molding in an sure. NPC, like a, a Tupperware or Tupperware. Um, <laughs> a, a, tote a, a tote of some sort well, and, there's always, and there's never al- used. And there's always a good thing to remember to donate to your games and to donate such like that because it, it can be to the discretion of the plot teams to look at a thing and go, you know what? This is a really nice piece. We'll put it out as an item or we'll put it out back to the player base for something. That said, there's also times that, yeah, we have played a variety of games to see nice things kind of go to the wayside because there's a unique usage and you look and go, okay, I don't know how an NPC would do this. Or, or why this would be given as a, we, a thing. Would or... be, right, be given. So it, it, So it's good to see that... People were able to buy these things, and a lot of these things were old pouches that like, pieces I wanted. Of, full, I almost wanted full one pieces of, of costuming. I, I, I I'm not gonna lie. I wanted one of those pouches that we donated, like the, that brown one that oh, we had. Yeah. I kind of wanted it, but I knew that brown didn't go with my costume. Like, right. I had enough blacks and grays and stuff that having a big brown pouch would have stood out. So as much as I was thinking, like, man, I could really use this. It's and you have that with other pieces as well. Of looking, you go. I'm probably not going to use this again. It's from a dead character or from uh, something else. So it's a case of okay, I'm going to donate it. Somebody else will use it. And right. It kind of goes back to the community concept that this game has to offer in terms of you know you have pieces of costuming or you have things that don't fit somebody either due to weight loss or growth spurts. There, there was a purple and patchwork corset that I would have probably killed to ever be able to to fit in, but logistically I looked at it and was just like, that's not happening. <laughs> but I love to see something like that be offered to the game because it's I don't want to belittle it by saying a, almost an in-game goodwill box, but it was really just, hey, these are things that whoever happened to have it couldn't use it any longer or bought it because it was a get like i want to offer this to the chapter again your community type atmosphere that i was just taken aback personally again people made things people donated things that's the other thing that we are very fortunate in is because it is a medieval like high fantasy medieval larp you have people that invest time in crafts right people that make leather stuff People that make metal stuff, people that will sew things and and craft things, and so it's it's also exciting to see the. They want to give back to the community and see their other people wearing or gifting their things. Oh, there's definitely a point of there's definitely a point of uh, back padding or pride that you look when somebody wears a thing you made and you're like, oh, absolutely, oh, I did that and they love it. That's so awesome. Again, <laughs> we we say that with our art that we received. I mean, I received a piece for my birthday from from Travis as well, which is well, actually. It's us, the two of us. Right. But it was it was really exciting to just out of nowhere be like, I got a thing. Uh, Yay. So it, it's just really exciting to see these pieces that are created and crafted by players. So yeah, it was really cool to I and mean, as you're going back with these so called goodwill box, like all the players had to do, especially new players who roll in with just jogging pants and a, and a tabard or something. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to poo poo on it. We have to start everywhere. Anyway, like at some place. Right. I remember bathrobe mages. Right. Graduation robe mages is one of my favorite. Like you could very clearly see it was a black graduation robe right. with like a border sewn on and like a couple sticky stars put on there. And you're like, you're a high poopa wizard. Like, <laughs> I mean, one of my first costume pieces, no joke, was an old cowboy vest. Right. Like, my dad had a leather vest from what But he used leather to do. counts as armor. He, and some of these pieces were just little simple bracers with yep. some a little bit of metal, and it gave them an armor piece. And bracers, it, I, I feel like bracers personally offer so much more detail to your costume for being such a simple thing. They, they're good. 
I, uh, the only thing I hate about bracers is getting them to fit properly. Oh, yeah, they're very personal. It's an absolute nightmare <laughs> because there are some people that have Popeye forearms because of fighters. <laughs> that, like, you get that big forearm and so the thing just slides off. Or it doesn't fit on your shield arm. It doesn't fit yet, but you got a shield. I definitely have had plenty of one-armed bracers because yeah. I've got a shield on my left arm. Uh, so <laughs> to kind of go back, what... We talked about the number of players that this one event did happen to bring. What what do you feel is the benefit, the pros and cons of having a larger turnout? Well, I mean, obviously the pros are financial stability for the game itself. Like, start with number one. When you have 50 to 100 people showing up paying, you know, event fee, that is additional money that goes back into the chapter because... It is used to work on more props. And this is a good case this particular weekend of not only did we have the feast, which was kind of a prop in of itself. Right. But then you also had a giant spider at one point with LED changing eyes. You had circles that would flash and glow that were rigged up to a And a we'll sensor. get to that. And we'll get we'll to get that. that. <laughs> but, but there was all sorts of props and things that also went to it that was done by plot and staff and you know, time and effort and money at the end of the day. like It's money that you... Having a higher PC or higher player character event means it's essentially, hopefully, more money going back into the chapter to produce better situations. Even buying makeup. I think it's little things that people forget. It's like buying costuming, buying makeup, having people organize the makeup. Thanks, Becky. Like going through... Going through costuming and props and, you know, rental of the campsite and all this other stuff. Kind of... It costs money. So having a big player. So I, I, again, I always look at bottom line of go, more players brings more money into the game. Right. Um, more players also brings more excitement into the game because, again, at the end of the day, when you have small small chapters that have smaller games where you have 13 of the same people playing the game, it's right. cool seeing those 13 people. But there's only so much story or so much you could do with the same players. 13 players, right. But when all of a sudden you roll in with a 60-player game, now my character could interact with different people, with new people, put get put into more deeper, unique situations, deeper situations and unique situations that causes me as a character to think outside the box or to interact differently or to feel that I'm in a larger living world. Right. I step away from the tavern to go escort somebody to the Healers Guild. And as I turn to walk back, I see the lights are on. I hear people talking. I see some people in the shadows. I see some people out in front. It it pulls you into the world far more. It than gets just, you further into the immersion. Of oh the, yeah, it's the super full, immersion, full game. Looking around and knowing there's a bunch of people, which then starts to put you and go, okay, where are other people? Are they hiding in the woods? There's they're, right. they're on a module doing something else, so the world feels like it's living. Uh, another perk is just people watching. Seeing people at costumes, seeing how other people react and how they play their characters, how they play the game. We had one guy that had the Arnie voice, was just too, I just, <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. He like wasn't expecting it. Thought, and again, plot teams at the best. Thought it was going to be a little annoying. And then all of a sudden, just the day to day of like, where's my armor? Just. You realize that that's Arnold every, Arnold Schwarzenegger every day. Like, that's not Arnold Schwarzenegger playing, playing Arnold, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Where's my armor? It, it I is need my just pen. that accent. Where, where's, where's the housemaid? Whoa, <laughs> <laughs> oh, too soon. So, okay, so some pros and cons to both situations. And cons. You now almost overwork your staff. Right. You now put yourself in a position of, hey who these people are used to running smaller events or smaller groups now have to either double time work their butt harder or really look for almost beg in some cases for additional assistance assistance for more npcs to help them run these big to make it feel more immersive for that many more players because otherwise you're going to have 40 people sitting around with the thumbs up their bums going uh, okay, what's going on? Right. So, and I did not see that issue this weekend. I did not. I saw people going and doing things. I saw people doing puzzles. With each other, doing puzzles. It was a very busy weekend. What are your, some of your pros and cons you think that I might have missed in this particular case? I think you've got the pros pretty much on point. The cons happen to be sometimes when you have events like this that are 
are supposed to be a little bit more laid back, a little bit more we are giving you guys freedom to role play amongst yourselves. There can be an expectation from traveling players that can be this world. Uh, they, they're expecting to get a little bit more of, you know, mods or, you know. Was this your expectation or do you No, I'm just saying in general, if, if a player came to Dragonfall without understanding that it was a celebratory Hey, we all play. Like, heavier role play. Heavier, heavier role play. Heavier festival. like in interaction with other players, not necessarily interaction with plot. It could have caught them off guard. I don't think that happened this weekend at all. I think everybody that showed up had a reasonable expectation of what was going to occur. So, I, again, I don't. I don't feel this Dragonfall had any bad connotations for that. But I could imagine somebody just not understanding what Dragonfall is, just being a random player that happened to show up and not have a explanation, being like, oh, this is kind of a... Uh, wh- where, where's the action? I will counterpoint you because they did do a good job at PC Talk to announce what is going on. But I do agree... At that point, you're already you're there, already you're there, in you're game, already and you've already paid right. your money. But at the same time, they're also very active on Discord, they're very active on the forums, they're very active on Facebook... So at that point is that buyer beware situation as far as I'm concerned of we've announced it in six different places. And if you come in anticipating not what you got told, that is your fault. Right. Like there is a level of – again, there is a point of we could provide only so much. You have to not be the (laughs) dumb-dumb and realize that this is what this event is. Like, hey – Again, with the initial dragon fight, like when they put the word out, is like this event is going to be fighting a dragon. You as a player have to put it in your head and go, I can die. <laughs> you can't right. expect to go fight a dragon and be like, tiptoe through the tulips <laughs> with me. Like it's so there are expectations that need to go. Um, that's why you have stuff like event teasers. That's why you have stuff right. that's put on Facebook or on the main website set, on Discord. Set proper expectations. I know Alliance South Michigan, and for the most part, I've saw Alliance in general really heavily utilizes their forums. Uh huh. Um, some games I know really rely on Facebook, which I've said in the past. I really, really, really hate a dependence upon Facebook to do your events and everything else, simply because if Facebook would fold tomorrow, what I do, could. What think, do you have? Left? I can think of two or three different games that would be like scrambling to try to get their event information out and whatnot because they rely so heavily on this third-party service to get the word out. Right. And while it is a very good social media connotation uh, network, it is still dangerous. So the other thing of Dragonfall I would like to comment on is the ability for player characters to also go in with the mindset of, this is a festival. I want to make sure I look my best. I want to make sure I have, you know, favors for certain people that I care about. So or like prom. Kind <laughs> of. Um, I I'm, I'm want to mention specifically, uh, you know, a player, uh, Lady Sen, who happened to do a ritual Friday night that resulted in some interesting costume pieces. Mm-hmm. She was... Honestly, she's a glow, glowing. She's a glow she was worm. glowing. She's a glow worm. <laughs> she went. She was one of not many actual player characters or PCs that went above and eye with contacts and had the white contacts and was mm-hmm. walking around as, as she had done a ritual that affected with her basically being lit up. Yeah, she at lit <laughs> midnight on a Friday. Here you see this lar- like glowing light come towards you and then you realize it's a person that has gone above and beyond to physically represent this ritual that went off and she had she was glowing she had lights on her she had a cape she had gone and gotten her hair like a a wig that had iridescent coloring in it it was striking and it's one of those moments to look at it and go this person thought about what they were doing in and out of game they they put in the mindset of this could happen 
why don't I actually physically represent it? And it, it just it that's one one of the notes that I took away from Friday night. I see in that it was a it was definitely interesting to see the glow as the rogue in the party i was excited to see somebody bright that could distract like take the attention away from anything i might do so <laughs> anybody that's i don't even know is with the art of deception like oh look at the bright thing over there i'm gonna dip into the woods now it was really cool costuming it was really well done uh i think in general a lot of the costuming and a lot of the players really stepped up and went above and beyond i think it's one of the things i've noticed about alliance south michigan to further, ba- I mean, this is turning into a really quick, a- you know, a kissing Ad. ass, <laughs> kissing ass podcast. But realistically, like, they are one of the games that I have seen, especially in the last few years, to really push and promote costuming and to up their game. And obviously, us rolling with the Emerald Flame, seeing those guys like really push their costumes and have trinkets and have pieces. And I've and I've said before, like. If you're at a convention or something else, you ask somebody about their hat or their shirt or something that they're interested in, you can look at these guys and and yourself included, myself included, we have costume pieces that are very particular to what we represent. parts of our character, parts of who we are, parts of whatnot. So it's really good to see when we're rolling with our crew – Everybody's in costume. There's very few. Like I even feel bad wearing hiking boots instead of like authentic period Renaissance boots. But right. I don't have the five hundred plus dollars to buy some good boots like that. But even then, I still hide it with some chaps and some other things to kind of hide the legs. But I pretty much am wearing mostly in period pieces or at least costume pieces that fit for the game. Like I obviously got the potion vial pouch thing and stuff. So a lot of and you start looking around through the tavern and I do remember standing back and looking over and seeing a lot of people in specialty pants and shirts and and even people in like jogging pants did a good job to hide like the seams Mm -hmm. and to like cover up and you know hiking boots is the norm just because it is a physically active game it's 2019 and like I'm a big fan of having comfortable shoes that you really aren't going to roll your ankle in and stuff like that right but yeah, for the most part, you see a lot of people in really good costume, bringing out their finest, representing their character, really helping with the immersion aspect of them being in that character and me as a witness to that character, seeing it as a piece of art, really. Like that character becomes art. You look at it and you could take away what you want from it. You look at it and it can evoke a, re- a reaction or an emotion. Right. And it's really fascinating to see how people come up with their own ideas of, hey, I'm going to have one leather bracer, one steel bracer. Why? Because of this X, Y, Z. It's really, really cool. And there's those moments when you can step away from yourself, from the game, from everything else, and just look out over the crowd and go, holy crap, there's a lot of nerds here Mm -hmm. that really take pride in how they look compared to, again, some other games we play where it's a T-shirt and a tabard and like just kind of ho-humming it. So to, again, continue on other players going above and beyond and representing their own their own style of game and bringing that style of game to other players, I want to give a shout out to one of our listeners, Becky, for doing her bunny, bunny fruit stand. That was really cool. And I'm guilty of eating like half of the beef jerky. <laughs> <laughs> uh, going above and beyond some of those things, it, as long as you continue to enjoy it that is what you should be doing as soon as it becomes a hindrance or it becomes an obligation you feel like you're obligated to do it i i urge people not to f- <clears throat> continue down that path because then there's resentment that can come from it and things like that it becomes a chore right so again shout out to becky for doing something like that i hope she continues to do it if she enjoys it and she finds enjoy and gets benefit from it uh she single-handedly brought another level of again immersion she yep. plays uh, she plays blue and she plays this bunny that is uh very giving and very caring about other people and making sure people aren't going without food or healthy food healthier well that's, options, well, that's I guess the thing it's say. a big thing is yeah having strawberries and grapes and beef jerky and other things out there really does help with some of the snacking decisions, because I know I definitely had, like, in my little food bin that I bring with the events, I had chips, and I had 
like kind of garbagey food. Right. And I sat there and snacked on grapes and strawberries. And I'm like, damn you and your secret healthy snacks. <laughs> but they keep keep us sustained and make it so that we can continue to LARP without but, feeling bogged but down. Well, and it's just another point in case of community at its fine. Yeah. It's like, obviously, she put her own her own coin into this. She put her own time into it and made the stand and spent the money on the snacks and stuff like that. And it's, again, another level of, Hey, I'm. We're part of this community. We're part of this organization. This isn't just a business. This isn't just a. You pay me money. You hit with foam. You go home happy. This is a. We're part of a thing. They do a good job with afters, where we all come together after right. the game is over. We go right. to the pizza place and have a drink and have some food. Talk about the event. Build up hype for the next week. Share stories on the forums. They do the same thing. Of they poke the players and go share some of your ideas. And again, we talk about you know moments of narcissism where. Who doesn't like to see their name on the boards? Of this person effect or this gave person, me a, a yeah, warm, fuzzy feeling. This person did a cool thing. I noticed it and it was awesome. Like right. who doesn't like to see their own name there? So yeah, good job. So let's kind of segue <laughs> from that and go into some of the things we experienced or, or, or witnessed this Dragonfall. Again, it's kind of a celebratory uh, event. It has its own kind of feel as games, riddles, Contests. What what were some of the contests that you saw? Uh, obviously, there was a giant puzzle that had to be put together. Um, it was like, what, like a thousand pieces, I think? But it was like red and black, go. With no box to... Really, yeah, no for- box really <laughs> work, so you had to deal with that. I made a joke of like, oh, you need one of those, like, take all the corner, or t- take all the corner pieces or something like that to drive them nuts. <laughs> so some of those, I've seen a puzzle where it's like no corner pieces, it's double-sided, and it's all just a bunch of leprechauns, like, like stacked. That's torturous puzzles. Um, we did some uh, some number puzzles, some riddles. We did a couple games that had like a um, commander type game where you had like battle tactics, like battle tactics. Had a just like player versus player type. <laughs> I thing. just kind of made the correlation. It was like you know medieval battleship almost. Sort of, sort of medieval battleship. It was funny because when I was on the one team playing for the rounds, like. The opposing, because you had the players, like, basically once they entered the square with each other, they had to fight each other. And nobody wanted to fight me. Nobody <laughs> wanted to fight me. Somebody fight me. I got lonely. But <laughs> um, obviously some of the puzzles you had, riddles going on. What else was out there that I saw? I was more speaking of some of the contests that we saw Friday. Oh. Or, I'm sorry, Saturday. Saturday we had the... Drinking contest. The drinking contest with, what was it, root beer I think they did? I, it was some type of soda pop. Oh. I'm only, I only mention it because I'm jealous Were you that... being politically correct there calling it soda pop so you don't yes. upset north, south, east, and west? Absolutely. Some fizzy drinks? Uh, some fizzy drinks, some Coke, some brown oh, ale. Oh, no Coke. Now you get into <laughs> Atlanta, you get into the southern people. Uh, so they did a drinking contest. I'm a little sad. Uh, unfortunately, I can't, I personally can't do carbonated drinks because I... It you have difficulty me, belching. It, I, I cannot belch, and it also gives me very painful hiccups. So as much as I think I could probably drink some of these people into the ground, as I mean, as fast as they were drinking it, because of the type of drink that they chose, I wasn't able to participate. Mm-hmm. However, I was promptly there with pictures so that mm. other people can can partake in it. And I know there's a couple pictures of the pieting contest, and I still think... Uh, uh, well, I think one of our listeners, Kiara or Pete, we're gonna we know her as, uh, looked utterly defeated, <laughs> trying to cram. And it was these like mini, like mini you know, pies, from yeah. like we see from like Walmart, the little right. mini. What are they like? Three inch, four inch in diameter or something. Little pies, but they're they're hand know, pies. They're, they're hand pies, but you eat eight of them. They're like our, our was it our two time champion was trying to go for three and he got to eight got pies decimated. and got dethroned I think that the, the, the final what was it 15 it was minutes t- or half hour it was 10 minutes oh 10 minutes okay it was 10 who could eat the most hand pies in 10 minutes so 10 minutes 10 pies that's absolutely bonkers. and I would like to give shout outs and good sportsmanship to the two players that happened to share the last pie or give the last pie so that they could tie mm-hmm. that was very well done uh, Nikolai and Ne'er do well, yeah. Ne'er do well, or uh, yeah, I'm ne'er do well. I think that's I, no, I think that's <laughs> I think it's one of those names to be a pun of like 
ne'er do well. Like, ooh, okay, I know what you're, I know what you're up to. But yeah, congratulations to those guys who are not a pie eating contest because ten little hand pies is awesome and disgusting. So well done. Yeah, only after Friday night when one player had happened to make cups of a pound of oh, they had chocolate, a, like a like. Yeah, a chocolate kind And of I'm not talking pudding. I am talking... Melted chocolate. Melted chocolate, essentially. And people did partake in it Friday night, not realizing that it was Straight melted up chocolate. chocolate. Yeah, they were like, oh yeah, this is like some pudding or something. No, no, no. no. This is like a brick of chocolate, warmed, sitting in the bottom of a cup, and good luck uh, with a spoon. Like, right. Huh. Blah. Blah. <laughs> uh, so we kind of talked about gussy up and prettied. Uh, I wore a dress. You you did wear a dress. There was a feast Saturday night. So to kind of gear gear you towards Saturday is very much like riddles and games and things like that. <laughs> All gearing up to a feast put on by one of the players and her family. Uh, very well done. They had a smoker going all day. Basically it making like a it, barbecue, yeah. Yeah, ma- basically making us food all all day. They closed <laughs> down basically the tavern at four o'clock. Yeah, they ushered it, everybody they, out. Yeah, they kicked everybody out and sp- had some volunteers set up the mess hall. Because again, for listeners who ha- haven't played here, it is at a like um, a four H club, Boy Scout camps, um, summer camp. Right. So there's a mess hall. There's a mess hall for. Uh, the the kids or the campers or whatnot, and it seats like a hundred people, give or take. Right. And so they kicked everybody else out, rearranged set up the, the tables. tables, had it to a proper medieval meal where they had tables on either side, and at the head table was the in-game nobility, which was a majority of the owners. And like, and we'll post pictures at the end of our our link for our show notes, um, so you guys can see those. <laughs> you can also go to uh, www alliancesouthmichigan.com and you'll get some photos there as well. And you, so the best way to describe this without anybody actually getting the visual visual cue is LARPing, as Red had already said earlier, that it was essentially LARPing prom. They had strung lights, um, very blue and white icy lights, and wrapped them in you know, gauze, white netting, and strung them from the rafters. They made a point to not have the fluorescent lights. Correct. On. They made sure that the the lighting was, you know, obviously we're not having open flame, but like the electronic candles and other, not dim, but ambiance. Uh, li- uh, light enough that you can see what you're doing, but not dar- not bright enough that it takes away from the fact that you're right. in a tavern. Yeah, you don't have the spotlight or the fluorescent lights overhead, which I get, but yeah, we and, and that's another good thing about South Michigan's really good about that is making sure those lights are off to set up to have that feeling of dimmer lights. It's supposed to be darker. You're not going to have this bright 500 watt floodlight just, you know, Taking shining into over, your room. Right. right, for sure. So... From the feast on, what were, I guess I shouldn't even say the feast, from the arrival of the nobles and the pictures, basically, that were taken, what were some of your highlights? The highlight, I mean, obviously everybody was in costume at this point, and not only just costume, but costume, costumed. They're fancy, they're they're fancy. fancy. They're fancy, because, I mean, you're thinking in game, like, I've got, like, my fox is armored. Chainmail, leather, a piece of plate in the center, Belts like I am ready for war, leather on my legs, bracers, and to then show up in well, partially addressed, kind of ha ha, but had a doublet on and a nice belt and a sash with the with the emerald flame going across it. I was a very pretty fox, so to do that and to have that additional costume was really cool. Now not everybody has additional costuming like that because again. LARPing I think everybody did happen to go a little like something different. Well, I think it's more had, of an opportunity to go with something <clears throat> different. A lot of people had additional pieces, or you 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 also don't realize the look of some like people's costumes look different when they don't have armor on. Oh, I will. Uh, it was one of my notes from earlier um, when we were planning the the episode. There. I walked around Saturday night after after the feast, and some people were still dressed in their other garb. In their prom. Their, their, yeah, their, <laughs> their, prom, their prom wear. 
I had to go around, and this is something that I do as my character, but I had to go around and almost memorize brand new silhouettes. That is something us as veterans kind of have a tendency of doing, but yes. I know a lot of players, and because of the, uh, on the way that they walk and the way that their silhouette is struck against a dark, you know, a bright light or something. I can tell somebody from 30 yards away how they walk or what their costume pieces look like. So when I did my rounds, basically before we went on the giant mod on Saturday night, I realized I was, what I was doing was memorizing that new silhouette because a lot of pieces were, a lot of people were missing their signature body types. For sure. So there was different costume pieces and things like that. And I was, I would, I was missing my pointy shoulders. <laughs> the, I, and even myself, I tend to garb myself in a lot more tight, tight fitted clothes so that I'm easier to move, more maneuverability in my clothes. And I was in a full body skirt with an underskirt and a, a corset that had, uh, for a lack of a better word, wings coming out of it. I had a hat on and with feathers. And I, you know, you take those moments to make yourself feel a little bit special. What's the name of the hat? It's a snood. I love that word so much. <laughs> I had a snood with a very large couple of different types of feathers, uh, plume attached to a it. Plumage. Your plumage and your snood. <laughs> How so, fancy. Pinkies up, ladies and gentlemen. Whatever you're doing, pinkies up. Uh, so it was interesting to see people get into the mood by getting more fancy because there's part there's costume pieces you don't want to wear because you don't want to take the dam it's, it's like run fair garb sure. you don't want to risk the damage coming to these pieces but you knew for at least two or three hours you were safe in a tavern not going to have any mostly issues. safe yeah the, the, the likelihood of your costume pieces being damaged or your expensive pieces being damaged definitely were, less. were far less so, it, it, yeah, I, I agree wholeheartedly. Like, I definitely got a lot of stuff that's been beaten and worn torn. So, but it's still, a lot of the stuff I wore was stuff I've owned for years, but nobody has seen me wear it for right. years. So, it still added the whole newness of like, oh, wow, Dusty's wearing something different. Same thing with you. You've like, if you, you and go, everybody can walk around and preen after each other and be like, oh my gosh, you, know, you so look pretty, so pretty so and, nice. and things like that. And oh, like Jane so with all her ruffles. <laughs> she had more ruffles than like a bag of ruffles. <laughs> dashing or it, it's it's just a nice it, it's a nice change of pace to a regular like we're all ragtag group of murder covered hobos in, we're covered in mud and sweat and everything else cause. everybody gets a chance to be a little bit fancier and i i would think that that's one of my pros um getting served was and, <laughs> very different different yeah i am not like even in real life when i go out to restaurants i'm still like let me help you i'll pass the waters down the line like right like yeah so it was it was cool to see that too to, to see them really come into character and do like again i had my server again i play a fox right and they had chicken and they had rabbit so on so the hold on i'm gonna because you're, you're skipping ahead of me here okay so there was a moment where, okay, so I'm going to kind of spell this out for people. So there was basically a cocktail hour, not not actual. There's hors d'oeuvres. There's there was freaking hors d'oeuvres. Oh, hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> ah, bacon wrapped anything. So there was hors d'oeuvres being uh, served out outdoors before we got allowed back into the tavern and sat for the main feast. So that was something, again, different. It felt real like it was a feast and people were coming out and going okay these are things to hi tide you over for a little bit until we're we're allowed to sit so then they opened the doors and there was sort of a procession of letting people sit and getting the real ambiance of the the feast and the tables and things like that so then we were ask what we you know we were had uh k or i'm sorry not kegs but our drinks were being poured by, you know, grapefruit and sparkling juices sure, and sure. things like that. Non-alcoholic beverages. Non-alcoholic beverages. And there was a toast by the king that basically summed up why all of us were there. Mm -hmm. There, And then it was grand entrance opening doors of a palaquin of meat. Let's say that again slowly. <laughs> 
a palaquin of meat <laughs> being brought out by the people who, again, uh, Evie, Genevieve, did a great job, Colette in-game, did a great job of cooking all of this food for us all day. Mm. And they brought it out in perfect display and they got a standing ovation. It was one of the, and, and to backpedal a little bit for you now, being there, sitting there, looking across the two tables, double-sided basically of all the people that were gathered, all the players, and the king and the nobility were sitting at the top. It was one of the terms I could actually want to use for it. I felt heroic. Absolutely. Like it, it was definitely a moment where, because again, we play we play murder hobos, we play guys, that are, <laughs> but it's rare when we get these moments where we can sit at the table and it's very clear we're being served by, you know, commoners or servers and such. And then the king and his nobility is there to address us as players. But not only as players, but it's just like with D&D, it's just like a video game. Like, we're not just small. Peasants. We're not just, yeah, we're not peasants or we're not just like your standard merchants or normal characters. In some way, we're basically comic book characters. We are heroes in some way. We have abilities to, well, some people don't know what that means. You know, it's a good game for a little while. But, um, but you have people that have basically unnatural powers that can right. control life and death that can make it seem as if they've been hit with a fatal blow and somehow get out of the way who can intercept stuff and conjure magic fireballs and all sorts of stuff so you're, you're looking at characters that are basically heroes but you don't see it in some aspects or the, the, the environment doesn't feel that sometimes when you're running with your group and fighting monsters and stuff it's the external validation. We're all right. our group. Yeah, sure. We know. You know, I run with a dragon, and you run with a fox, and, and then a dragon, and an elf, and a werebear, and all these other characters that are like heroic level characters. But it was definitely a time where I'm sitting there at the table, and I'm looking around as the king and the nobility are addressing us. Of, you know, we're celebrating the death of a dragon and realizing that the king isn't doing this with other people. He isn't sitting there with with just common folk or just the, the standard lords and ladies, but like. You adventurers, you people who are their murder hobos, <laughs> I cheer you for fighting these great evils to to doing these things. And so it's definitely a moment of, even though I wasn't there for the dragon fight, it's still put into a summation of like, holy crap, I assisted in this game. I assisted in this world. It feels very living to see the king walk by and, you know, did you, did you have enough to eat? Like that was really, right. really catching of, did you have enough to eat? You know, was, was it good? Yes. Thank you very much. And continuing on doing his rounds. Like, maybe that's not very true to medieval times. The king would not give two right. fucks about you. But it is still a game. It's still... It's a good out-of-game and in-game bridge between... Your store are players. We're, we're very thankful you're our players and such. But also on an in-game level, you guys are also heroes. You guys are... You accomplish this great deed. Nah, you guys and are, therefore, it should continue to be remembered always you guys are the x-men the the avengers the you know uh the league of heroes and such like you guys are above the norm and i recognize that and i thank you and so it's just a really cool moment for me to sit at the feast as they're bringing out this palaquin of meat huh. and, what, and what exactly was on that so on there obviously was ribs chicken rabbit pork sausage what else? Grilled pineapple, like full pineapple, pineapple, yeah, full pineapple, pineapple and full, like, you know, all all its glory. It, it was one of the coolest moments, I would say, by far, I have experienced in any LARP and ever. I, and I definitely had the joy of a smarmy uh, waiter. He's like, <laughs> hey, what would you like, sir? I'm like, I want uh, chicken and rabbit. He just kind of looks, he's like... How predictable, sir. And in terms of like, <laughs> hey, wait. And there was just, there was moments of, uh, it really was jovial. For the lack of any other better adjective to use, the air about that oh, building was, was happiness and jovial and everybody was enjoying themselves and having a good time. And then what happened after the feasts? <laughs> All of that went by. So in typical LARP fashion, there's always something that it, it, something occurs and 
co as we were talking about earlier this this grandpa that has ingraced himself ingratiated himself to the players happens to make a decision it ends with him his body dissipating basically he he dies he dies in the middle it's very wed red wedding i have to say that one a couple times it's very red wedding ish that something dramatic did happen now, obviously, again, it's something to further the story for a LARP and entertain you and get you involved in the overarching story of this nobility. So he happens to dissipate while people are, again, talking in-game and, and celebrating. So that ensues the mod or that module for the, the night on mm-hmm. Saturday. Uh, give, me, give me a description of it, Red. Well, we, you and I were, went back to our cabin to change. Correct. Because we had a feeling something was going to happen Saturday night. And it's a little out of gaming knowledge, a little in gaming knowledge. Uh, we knew in-game stuff was going to happen. We knew out of game that the staff has been asking for NPCs to help run a big mod on Saturday, Saturday night. So for better or for worse, we had a feeling something was going to happen Saturday night. So after the feast, we're like... We need to go change Correct. and get our armor, get our costumes, get our other stuff because the nice costumes that we have on now gonna get wrecked. And boy, howdy, I gonna get wrecked. So for story purposes, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it out for our listeners. There's some find out in-game situations. But we end up finding ourselves in a basically rifting through time and space where we end up in a field. And this field is lined with candles obviously electric candles because no open flames but we have these electric candles that make this giant uh circle giant circle i'm trying to think of the space like there was enough to hold 60 all 60 of us and then some in this space and so we're in this giant circle or we're walking toward this giant circle to enter the circle and the dark elf grandpa co is in the center more or less fighting us. It's sort of a dream situation. Not. Nah, it's a weird. It's hard to explain. So I'll spare the details in that regard. But he is there fighting us as a protector, as, as, guardian, as the, as the guardian. But he is at this point an environmental thing, an environmental aspect. And what makes it very interesting about this this fight? And I do want to expand on it a little bit. And we may sound a little redundant, but I did talk to Plot later. And they were unabashedly happy to say that it felt MMO-ish, a very multi, uh, massively multiplayer, like online, World of Warcrafty and whatnot, Rifts right. style of mod. And it's cool to see that it had that vibe because as soon as we walked in, there were, for lack of a better term, gimmicks that were going on. That we had to react to while this fight was go- while, while this fight was happening. It wasn't your standard walk in fight, fight the thing. monster A, win fight win fight walk out get treasure walk get out. treasure. No. We walked into this large circle and I forgot the spacing probably a hundred two hundred feet in a giant circle. Oh yeah, so to hold us all, there were then circles so rope lights set into the ground, but they were already been programmed uh, through by one of the, the engineers that is on plot. And then at the end of the circle was basically a tar- like a tent pitched off uh, a, 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 tent, a basically, canopy. Like a canopy with a monster that they lovely call Lola, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, I, that was Lola. And what it was was a 16 foot long claw. That just came out of this canopy swinging from the darkness. Because, again, it's full moon night. There's the moonlight, and that's about it. Right. And this giant black claw with yellow, you know, fingers are swiping full, at us. Fully safe, by the way. Fully safe. All, all fall, any part that hits you, you're, you're good. You're, you're, you're safe by it. And then being held up was this massive, what, 10-foot spherical head of this, like, half-melted... Face. face and being held up in the air again we will post pictures we, so you get a pictures posted. <laughs> like monsters were coming out of this creature's mouth which were other you know obviously people dressed up as these monsters coming to attack us and full stage show everybody that was operating these massive pieces were all dressed in black so you, you really only see 
what you're a supposed giant to giant claw see. coming out of the darkness. And then, as that's happening, from behind this giant spider, and by that I mean it's rigged to this guy's back, to, to Chris's back, and suspended some 8 to 10 feet in the air with glowing long, eyes. Long, furry legs. Long, furry, really gross legs attacking us as well. So we're getting attacked from all sides. We got the guy in the middle. We got these circles that are, like, flashing. And if they flashed a number of times and you weren't inside the circle... You got an area of effect. You, you got you basically got killed. Yeah. You, you got murdered. Red mist. Red, red fine mist. Red fine mist. So it had a very MMO feel to it. Uh, okay, the one of the gimmicks is the, the circles are flashing, so you need to get inside the circles when they stop flashing, so then you're protected. Okay, the circles now drop or no go, longer flash. Go heal the people that got stuck and then go fight the, the line battle that's now occurring. And all the stuff, all the monsters are spinning out of the face, and then every now and then the spider would approach from the back and you have to go fight that. All the while fighting the the environmental guy, the dark elf in the center, who is just challenging people and wreaking havoc as well. And with some, and then there's puzzles as well. Actually, Correct. there's also two puzzles that need to be done by these circles. So it's a case of it felt like an MMO, but it's cool to see them just lean into it. And yeah, this is this is kind of a giant. Puzzle. How many people can honestly you you. Anybody listening to this show knows exactly how, at its height how many people played WoW or did raids oh, and teen stuff like million, that. Something like that. Teen millions of players. And here's 60 people, not even 60 people, like probably 40 people because the other side were NPCs. Sure, sure. But 40 people can say, I, and get, get your drinks ready, physically got to do this Drink. part. Of a of a wow or, or of a wow I'm sorry of of a type of gimmick like that and, hey there get, hey there kids you want to do a wow with me <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I'm saying like how can, how many people can say I participated participated in, a, in something that really felt it was like, an epic raid a, yeah it was a, an epic absolutely raid. epic raid it was an epic raid style fight where you had to avoid things you had to it wasn't just as you said walk in kick butt leave. There were gimmicks, there were puzzles, there were things that you had to figure out to make the battle fight tactics. There was tactics. I, for for battle, I lost for, my voice. I was gonna say g- gimmick is a bad. I, I feel like yeah, I, I want ga- to ga- gauge away from that word. There were actual battle tactics that needed to be realized, and other than just you know fighters refit your armor, healers get those people down. There was things that you. There was other things in the world that you had to be aware of. And play smart and do your tactics correctly. Otherwise, it could have ended up with 20, 40 people. Just get murdered. Absolutely getting murdered. And it's, and it's, and again, it goes to a testament to the players, but it also goes to a, a big testament and a big props and a thumbs up and a big thank you from us here at Great Muscle mm-hmm. Geekery for the work that's put into it. The fact that the circles were programmed through a Raspberry Pi. The fact that the props were built by not just the Michigan staffers, but, Chicago but also brought that. across from Chicago. When you, we knew, we knew we were in for something when the the U-Haul van gets dropped, <laughs> driven on the site. <laughs> that is a little bit of a giveaway. When you're looking like, there's a U-Haul van on site. Oh, shit. Okay, they oh, had no. to rent or something. They had to rent a thing to bring the thing made of, you know, pipe and foam to kick our butts. So it's, again, summation as we're coming up on our time here, like, it was a absolutely stand, like outstanding event. It was a marquee showing from the plot team uh, what they're capable of in terms of physically drink, crafting <laughs> monsters, and an experience with the very MMO style fight that is and not just a, not just crafting monsters but also in the world crafting a why we would be fighting this monster oh, sure. well and i was getting to that point of the story that goes with it as well why we're doing this and having an understanding of you know getting characters involved and again this is a big effect for a couple players who've been working on this story for years and had a big climactic finish with a big fight that could have just involved those two characters, but involved the whole town and got everybody working together. Multiple options of people, of plot and PCs alike going, 
I don't know what we're doing. I don't know what we're going to go fight. If you still feel like being here, please stay. And if not, no harm done. Yeah. So it's all in all, it was by far one of the best events that I've attended in a while. Um, I've said that a few times now, but they, they, they continue to run a great show. They continue to run a great game. They continue to put push back. and put back what they get back into the game. And I know that they also mentioned that next year is going to be a unique year. Next year is going to be where Shattered Realms. The Shattered Realms campaigns, where it's going to be a lot more involvement from the players to run one weekend things, which <gasps> supposedly your uh, hosts here, grandmas, are, are going to be doing along with uh, TC, I believe. With you Correct. and TC are kind of spearheading that weekend. Yes. And you will have a number of players or other players and plot people who will be assisting running you know basically being npcs or story writing for that weekend and what are we looking at september of 2020 i believe so yes so obviously subject to change fine details etc etc but it looks like we will be uh running a alliance south michigan one shot in september yes so Come come play in the world that I will write for you. And uh, you've been, in your experience, is, uh, had had a plot at Nero Highborn for five years? Five years, yeah. And then any anything else you just IPC? Uh, I also was on plot for Nero, uh, Wisconsin for, I believe, two seasons. So you have In my, my seven early years. days. So five years had a plot and two years of plotting Correct. on top of that, so seven years. And while I wasn't a head of plot, and not really plot plot, I was definitely a monster guy and rep builder, fizz, you know, fizz reps and, you know, props and stuff. And I did plot for Midwest for about two years and then was just a generic, hey, we need you to play a thing. Right. Like, I know the rules. This, these guys are fighting a guy. Can you go play this thing for us? Right. You're small, you're fast, we're gonna, you're going to be a quick lane or something like that. <laughs> so it'll be good to see... Uh, Again, what the community gives back, and to really, the game. I'm I'm looking forward to the the owners and major plot people at Alliance South Michigan have been doing this for ten years, yes. and if anybody has been any type of LARPer, they should understand the longevity of that team being as cohesive and as great as they have been for. 10 years it's time for them to have a little bit of a hiatus they're still going to be involved they're, oh, they're still, still on gonna, the game they're still going to do things they're going to make sure everybody gets taken care of but this is a chance for the players and anybody that's ever thought oh i could I i've got these great these ideas i've got that i could do this to give them an opportunity to add to the world a lot of times plot people get so bogged down that they're like oh i can't i can't world build but I've got these great ideas. I can't, I can't so run this is six an, events Correct. So this is an opportunity for the skeleton to be pre-written for you, and then you add the meat to the story. Mm. And I'm very excited. Very, more, very excited. More organs means more human. <laughs> so before we shut down uh, for this week's episode, let's uh, go through, do, like, usually on the forums, they usually go, like, event highlights, and we listed a lot of stuff. Give me like one or two things from other players, kind of shout outs to some players that you've seen. And again, we have, we've done some of them, but like a couple other additional shout outs we could throw out there for some players. Because again, I'm sure they love to hear their own name and whatnot. So what, what's something we could kind of, a little shout outs to some players out here that we've seen over the weekend. I would give, again, shout outs to Sin for her stepping up and uh, representing her her uh, dedication to her own role play and then also her walking around and really playing the role of the healers guild mistress and she went around and get kind of went above and beyond and gave gifts to practically everybody i mean we had favors at the end of it like i have a magnet on my wall that is a dragonfall 2019 favor to forever commemorate commemorate the the experience uh, and then my other my other shout out would go to TC, her being able to get the experience to bring the end of a, a, a several year plot line to finality and be able to have the cohesiveness to get an entire town to do what it did was epic and 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 truly heroic. And I know I don't speak for myself here. I'm pretty sure I speak for the both of us here when I say one of my big shout-outs goes to kind of unsung heroes. 
um, while Travis got to be out playing Co and interacting with a lot of PCs and getting a lot of props for it, I do want to give a big thanks to Chad and Christopher and Lewis and Inger and Chris Chris Inger. We just know him as Inger, but Chris for the, a lot of the behind the scenes stuff that they didn't get the opportunity to roll in town a lot and stuff. They're, they're focused. There were bits and pieces in the town. They were able to show up for sure, but they their focus was on setting up story stuff, behind the scenes work, getting the, the props set up and building all of that that I think sometimes get overshadowed. Right. You, you have more. And again, no, no, not taking anything away from Travis's co. However, there are moments where You'll see a lot of people, a lot of people's responses are, hey, I had a great event because I played with Co or I did this and I did this. I got to hang with Travis where the other guys who are setting up the, the scenes. Even Matt, everything. Matt as Mathis being able to be accessible he's playing, for most yeah, of. Yeah, he's playing his character right. and yet he still needs to take care of the game because he's an owner. He's doing the donations. He's, he's managing the, the table. Yep. He's getting the nobility, the the tokens that they need to give out for their games and things like that. It just was an overall well executed and organized event. And it needs to be the, all of those bits and pieces and those, those parts need to be recognized as a whole. And of course, shamelessly, I will say it's good to see our, uh, our Patreon supporters at the game as well. Seeing Bada there, seeing Reed there, seeing Mattis there, seeing Inger there, like getting involved and and doing what they do. I mean, uh, Reed as his Ram was mm-hmm. really really fun to a uh, couple Interact moments. A <laughs> couple moments we thought his uh, horns were gonna get stuck in the lighting above, and he was just gonna <laughs> man, man, panic and tear. There's a picture I think floating around where he's trying to eat his chicken skewer. But and his, his horns, horns are in, are in the way, way so right. he's like trying like a dog trying or to run Becky through Or Becky eating when the announcement of rabbits being served, being served. and she's a rabbit scavenger or a wildkin, sorry. Uh, yeah, I don't say scavenger thing, but um, even Bada kind of like sideswipe. It's like, yeah, yes, I will have the, and looking at the rabbit and just like, venison, wink, wink. <laughs> So it's it's always good to see our, our our supporters there and who continue to support us and tell us good things as well out of game you know after the game or before game starts to you know grace us with uh, with compliments and to say that they listen and they enjoy what we do as well so you get to double it up when we start doing some plot in uh, next year huh? right exactly uh, you gonna feel bad killing any of our any of our supporters. I mean, you know, things happen. <laughs> murder, murder. Please don't. And please still give us money. Murder, <laughs> murder, murder. <laughs> no, nah, but all jokes aside, uh, thank you all for once again. And uh, we appreciate everything that uh, staff had to do. And we appreciate what other players did for us by being there, by being in character, by donating, donating, by time, yeah, money, time, money, experience, skills, skills. Yeah. I mean, the, the feast itself is not something you just like, Ta-da, I'm going to do a feast like this. There's years behind it. Uh, maybe we'll get the information and post a link for, um, for Eve's family. If they I do believe they run a, a barbecue joint of some sort. I believe, I mean, they at least got the smoker. Somehow, yeah. So I so. think they, I think they do have a business. If so, uh, I will try to find a link and post it in there as well for them to to help promote them because food was fantastic. It was absolutely a great time, and yeah, as always though, uh, we like to finish out as we like to say here at uh, Gray Muzzle Geekery that, that we are all indeed geeks, and to be otherwise means to live without passion. Have a good night. Night. Thank you for listening to another episode of Gray Muscle Geekery with Dusty Red and Dusty White. You can support our continued geekery at our Patreon website patreon.com slash gray muzzle geekery be sure to check back often as we start to add geek cred levels you can send your questions and comments to us at gray muzzle geekery at gmail.com or find us on twitter at gray muzzle geek we can be found on itunes google Podcasts, stitcher spotify and buzzsprout and a special thank you to pepper coyote for our intro theme, and if you like what you heard, you can find more of his stuff on Spotify, Patreon, or directly from his Bandcamp page.